കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം ഈദ Namaste. So today we're going to continue with verses 14 and 15 of Drig Drishya Viveka. Text 14. Srishtir nama brahma rupe satchidananda vastuni abdhaukena divatsarva nama rupa prasarana the manifestation of all names and forms in the entity which is existence consciousness bliss and which is the same as brahman like the foam etc in the ocean is known as creation text 15 antar drig drishayor bhedam bahish cha brahma sargayo avrinosha parasaktish so sansarasya karanam the other power of maya conceals the distinction between the perceiver and the perceived objects which are cognized within the body as well as the distinction between brahman and the phenomenal universe which is perceived outside one's own body this power shakti is the cause of the phenomenal universe well <laughs> these are huge verses they cover a lot of ground and actually most of it has already been covered in a previous series actually two different previous series the mysteries of the matrika is one and the other is lalita sahasranama So I'm not going to go into the intricacies of the creation in depth as the commentary does. If you want to read the commentary, it's in the video description below. But what I want to point out is the meaning of this for meditation and development of consciousness. So what is the difference actually between Brahman and the creation? What is the difference between Shiva and Shakti? Shiva represents pure consciousness that is unconditioned by any relative ideas such as location, time, distance, change, boundaries, so on and so forth. But Shakti is everything of duality. good bad right wrong hot cold inside outside here and there now and then <laughs> all the different differences that go to make up our experience in the world so she has these two powers which the last couple of verses have talked about the projecting power and the covering power these are not the perceptions you are looking for <laughs> so although we talk about these two powers as separate actually they're not separate and they come into existence or come into action together because this is the maya shakti shakti means power so maya shakti has the ability to project the existence of a dualistic universe and at the same time cover the distinction between this universe and brahman so actually brahman is not the cause of the universe brahman is without any action so it's maya it's shakti it's the goddess who creates the whole thing manifests all the different names and forms Now we know about names, huh? Now, this is a subject that's covered in pretty much detail in Mysteries of the Matrika. Of course there's always more. The uh, Vedas are pretty much unlimited knowledge. But we give the principles 
of the creation. And the creation is done by sound, by vibration. Vibration means the alternation between two different states, a periodic alternation. So the Sanskrit alphabet, a, a, e, e, u, u, ri, ri, a, i, o, ao, ng, and a, uh, uh, these are the vowels. And then there are, I don't know, 23 consonants or something like that. And their combination has all the different meanings that are possible. And we've gone over this too in the past, so I'm not going to do it again. In fact, we presented quite a bit of detail in a paper on the subject, which is on our online library. There's a link down in the uh, video description. So what is actually the difference between Brahman and the creation? Because actually only Brahman exists and the creation is simply an epiphenomenon. In other words, it's something that appears to exist, but doesn't really. And the parallel is drawn between the ocean as a whole and the waves and foam and other phenomena that appear on it. So the waves and foam of the ocean are nothing but water. They're nothing but the ocean itself. Yet, they're different from the ocean as a whole. So how is this possible? It's only because we are wired up from our very creation to perceive differences where there aren't any. Uh, there aren't any differences really between the ocean and the waves. But because we perceive them as different, we call them by different names. So this is an illusion. Uh, just like the water in the desert or the snake seen in the rope uh, or uh, the thief seen as a post in the night. Uh, if you get up in the night and you're wandering around half awake, you happen to see a fence post in the dark and it looks like a man. Oh, thief, thief. <laughs> and someone brings a light and you see, oh, it's only a post. Well, the same with the snake and the rope. The rope is always there, just like the post is always there, or the ocean. But the other phenomena that we superimpose on that are projected by our own minds. So, you see, this is really intelligent. I mean, you have to hand it to, to the goddess how intelligently she has set up the creation. <laughs> I mean, if I was going to design, for example, a very big computer system, I would make it, break it up into a bunch of independent nodes. And each node has all the powers of the whole system. But they are simply uh, clones of that power. They're not actually the power. And they're directed by some central organization, but they're all actually working independently. So it's the same with the creation. Huh? Each node or each separate being has the full powers, consciousness, intelligence, thought processes, action, a body, senses, everything is there. But each one is actually independent. And all the functions determined by the central authority, for example, karma, birth and death, like that, are actually carried out by each independent node separately. It's brilliant. I mean, think about it. Karma is simply the memory of all the things we have done. And at the end of each lifetime, that memory is compressed, it's boiled down into tendencies and habits, attitudes, points of view. And then these are passed, these abstractions or summations 
or compressions of the raw data are passed on to the next body through the monomaya kosha. See how elegant it is? That God doesn't have to sit there with a notebook recording everybody's act actions and thoughts. We do it ourselves. So in this way, the law of karma is going on from life to life. And we actually don't even think about it. But yet, if we look deeply into the mind, we see that the mind itself is the structure that carries this out. It's brilliant. It's totally amazing. <laughs> so this is Shakti. Shakti is, as far as the world goes, all-powerful. When people think of an all-powerful God, they're really thinking about Shakti, because she is the power. She has been given all the power of Shiva. And Shiva is simply the witness. He's just the observer. He's not the doer. He doesn't participate. And she even creates his form. This is revealed in the Lalita Sahasranam. So Shiva doesn't really get involved with the creation. He uh, delegates that authority to Shakti and she carries out the creation. Now, where does that leave us? Drig Drishya Vivekaha. We have to develop the ability to distinguish or discriminate Vivekaha between the seer and the seen between the cause and the effect. Because this world appears as it is on account of our way of looking at it. And if we go along with Maya and say, oh, actually there's no difference between God and the world, then we get trapped. If we can't distinguish the seer from the seen, if we think that the world is God, then we fall into the trap and we can't get out. Have you seen ever uh, crabs in a basket? There's some good videos on YouTube. Look it up, crabs in a basket. If you go to the fish market, they're not in a covered container. The crabs are simply in an open basket. Well, why don't they just climb out and escape? Because as soon as one crab starts to climb up the side of the basket, the other ones claw onto him and pull him down. So this is the problem in the material world. We are surrounded by beings who are completely conditioned. And therefore, anyone who attempts to get free is immediately pulled back down by the people and other beings around him. That's why the yogis like solitude. That's why, for example, I live alone. Not that I can't have companions. I don't want companions. <laughs> because in every case, companions will bring you down to their level or up to their level. But it's very hard to find anyone who is truly enlightened, especially these days. So we use the Vedic scriptures and the teachings of great uh, realized beings like Ramana Maharshi, Chandrasekhar Andra Saraswati, and Sankaracharya, and so many others. The Vedic scriptures themselves are the best guides, but they're difficult to understand. The different teachers like Vasishta have left us scriptures that explain everything in great detail, impossible to misunderstand. So by following these scriptures and by doing the things they tell us to do, huh? such as wearing basma, such as meditating during the sandhya in the morning, noon and evening, uh, in this way, we develop this discrimination, this drig, drishya vivekaha, which leads us directly to liberation from this material conditioning. And this is the end of all suffering. Aum Tatsa.
ओम शक्ति ओम